The Prince and the Princess in the Forest. <laughs> Let me go. Choose wisely, Queenie. Either make me king or I capture your precious son. You'll never be king. So, your son it is. No! Oh, the poor queen. How did she end up here? Let's rewind and figure out the whole story. In the kingdom of Cerulus, the beloved king had passed away. The queen and her son, Prince Raymond, were devastated. Over the days, the queen lost her appetite and had many sleepless nights. Raymond began to worry. Mom, let's take a trip. I don't feel like one. You've barely slept or eaten. Father would want you to be happy. <sighs> All right. They set out the next day and traveled for a while, soon reaching a forest. Ray, I'm tired. They wandered about and came upon an old house. Seems deserted. Let's rest here tonight. They ate in front of a roaring fire, after which they drifted off to sleep. The next morning, they rose fresh and... Oh, my back! Goodness, I'm starved! As they ate, Raymond realized they needed more water and decided to find a stream. When I'm back, we'll continue our journey. The queen decided to explore the house, but it wasn't empty. Finally! Ooh! It was Bruno, a bandit who'd hidden himself in the abandoned house. Let me go! <laughs> I'm the one dishing out the orders. Who are you? Name's Bruno. <laughs> when I saw you two entering last night, I nearly ran away. But then I realized you two were royalty. What do you want? Something simple like being king. King? Yes. Take me back to the palace with you and crown me king. You think it's that easy? Not unless you make it difficult. I refuse. Now Bruno hadn't thought this far. The prince would be back soon, so he hurriedly decided to lie. If you refuse, I'll send out my men to capture your son. Ten, twenty dangerous thieves like myself. <laughs> Let me go! Choose wisely, Queenie. Either make me king or I capture your precious son. You'll never be king. So your son it is. No! The queen, having already lost her husband, reluctantly agreed. All right. No, no, I need a promise. I know a royal's promise can never be broken. I promise to make you king. Now all this while, Raymond was at a stream, collecting water. There, better head back. A dog? In this forest? Oh, hey! The dog seemed anxious, tugging at Raymond's pants, urging him to follow. Something's off. Hmm, I'm sure Mom can handle a few minutes. He followed the dog, and it led him to a den. They both crept inside. There, he came upon a group of thugs, quarreling. I've done most of the dirty work, so the loot's mine. No, if anyone deserves the code, it's me. <laughs> Looks like a bunch of thieves. He went along, following the dog, and ended up in a strange room. Oof. So, what now? Who are you? Raymond turned, stunned to see a young lady trapped behind bars. Who are you? I asked first. I'm Prince Raymond, from Cerulus. A prince? In a thieves den? This dog led me here. Sugar Muff! Well? <sighs> My name's Nessie. I'm the princess of Splendalia. I was captured two days ago and... Two days ago? How come no one's informed me about a missing princess? Um, I kinda snuck onto our ship. No one knows I'm here. Huh? And then? Well, I snuck off the boat and Sugar Muff escaped and I chased him into the forest. One thing led to another and... You got captured. Yup. My people are supposed to leave tonight. Please save me. What kind of prince would I be if I left a poor, irresponsible princess in a thieves' den? The terrible kind. 
And I'm not irresponsible. I'm adventurous. Raymond tried to break open the bars, but they wouldn't budge. Hmm. Oh. I overheard the thieves talking about a special type of sword they'd robbed, where the beholder would be invincible. Where is it? Down there. Take Sugar Muff with you. Sure, like he'll help. Raymond walked down the tunnel and came to a huge metal door. The sword must be behind this, but how... Hey! Sugar Muff dug at a small hole under the door and pushed himself through. Good little, uh, Sugar Puff. The sword, fetch it. Will he understand me? But Raymond didn't have a chance to ponder as the door came crashing down. Goodness, did you use the sword? Raymond shot back up to Nessie and freed her immediately. But as they tried to escape, the thieves ambushed them. They'd heard the sound of the metal door. Lucky I have this. And I have this. The thieves were no match for the sword and a few doggy tricks. Ow. Good, Sugar Muff. They managed to escape and ran back to the house. Such was the hurry, he didn't notice a missing horse. Here, take my horse and go. Thank you, Raymond. Here, as a token of my gratitude. If you ever need help, call on me. She galloped away with Sugar Muff. Mom, I'm back. Mom? Mom? He called, but no one answered. He checked outside and noticed the missing horse. Something's happened to Mom. I need to return. The trip back to the palace took him the whole day. When he reached it, he overheard the people talking. Oh, poor queen. The new king sounds horrible. New king? I heard he's actually a notorious bandit. What about the prince? King Bruno's given out orders to capture the prince. Raymond looked at the palace and saw burly men guarding it. He didn't recognize them. <sighs> so my poor mother's been captured by a bandit who's now king? Oh. He pulled out the ring which Princess Nessie had given him. Nessie, she'll help me. He traveled back to the port, but Splendalia's ship had left, so he took another one bound for Nessie's kingdom. Raymond reached the kingdom of Splendalia. Ooh, maybe a bite first. I'll find Nessie right after that. Nessie was in her palace. Nessie, you need to find someone nice to marry. Ah, uh, Sugar Muff's enough for me. We're talking about a partner to love. Not a partner in crime. Nah, I'm good. Come on, Sugar Muff. A partner, huh? Hmm, Prince Raymond seemed nice. If only she knew where Raymond was. <sighs> Not much left. He paid for his meal and trotted out to the palace gates. I'm here to see Princess Nessie. Wait, I'll just... Hmm. Huh? Raymond rummaged around in panic. Did I lose it? He traced back his steps and looked everywhere for the ring, but couldn't find it. Without the ring and almost no money or help, what could he do in another kingdom? The ring was sold to a merchant, where it was found by a palace maid. The maid brought the ring and gave it to Nessie. She was shocked. What? How did you find this? A merchant was selling it, your highness. I had to wring it from his clutches. That means Raymond is here. Nessie went to the merchant, who fearfully spilled out everything. From there, she visited the end Raymond had eaten at. But he wasn't there. I was looking for a job, your highness. Even asked me for one, but I refused. Nessie described Raymond to her guards, and in no time, they were all out looking for him. Soon enough, 
they found him working at a florist. A prince? In a shop like this? Nessie, you found me. A flower shop suits you. Cause I'm sweet like flowers? Maybe. Now, what are you doing here? Raymond told her the whole tale. Who's the irresponsible one now? Well, I'll help you. Raymond and Nessie devised a plan and set out to Cerulus. They showed up in front of its palace gates, well disguised. Who are you? Ahem, I'm the oracle from the eastern mountains and have come to pay King Bruno a visit. The guards were startled. It was true that an infamous oracle lived in the eastern mountains and people flocked to see her. Bruno leaped in triumph. My greatness has spread so far that even the oracle has come to see me. His blind ego allowed for Raymond and Nessie to waltz into the palace with ease. Welcome, great oracle! To what do I owe this pleasure? You owe it to your greed! And foolishness! Attack! The soldiers threw off their hoods and rushed towards Bruno. Nessie's soldiers were trained men, and in no time they had the thugs and their king all tied up. Raymond! Mom! Oh, I'm so glad you're all right! Bruno was captured, and the kingdom was now at peace. Who's this lovely lady? The name's Nessie, your highness, Princess of Splendalia. Oh, you're Trisha's daughter. You know my mother? Of course. I haven't seen her in some time. Well, why not visit her? After all, we never really had that trip. And so, the three of them went to Splendalia. The two queens were thrilled to see each other, and in her friend's company, Raymond's mother got better. Raymond and Nessie spent a lot of time together, until eventually... Mother? Father? Remember how you wanted me to find love? We still want it, dear. Well, now I have. Oh, we're going to be queen-in-laws. Splendid. I'm happy for you both. Thanks, Mom. Nessie had discovered love. The queen had regained her peace, and Cerulus had found its true king. Their kindness, persistence, and bravery had only made them stronger, and it is those qualities that allow a person to travel so far and wonderfully in life.